everyone, we're back here. It's, I'm Colin Way. This is my workshop. We're bringing the Skill Centre to your home. Um, I'm here representing the Axminster Skill Centre. Um, as you, if you are regular to this um, live broadcast, then um, you know we've been doing this now for um, seems like forever, but weeks and weeks and weeks. So we've covered lots and lots of projects. Um, today, as normal, we've got Charlie behind the camera. He's going to be looking at all your questions. Um, and just one thing I'd like to say, um, again, as well as thank you for all your support, continued support and growing support, is well done for everybody that's posting pictures of what they've been doing, the, the, um, um, the influences of, of our projects has certainly been coming through in the images and videos as well. So brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. Um, if you remember back on Tuesday, we were doing a couple of little things. Charlie's going to have to remind me because it, my mind's getting pickled with all of these projects. I know we finished up with a little spinning top. Flower. We made some flowers. We made a little vase and a bottle stopper. That was the things, wasn't it? So we were lots of small projects. I did feel on Tuesday it was a little bit rushed. So we're going to calm things down a little bit today. Um, it's very hot. Unfortunately, you've got to put up with my legs again. I'm in the shorts. Um, it's very hot and sweaty in the workshop. Um, I'm starting the um, extractor extension. So in the next few weeks, you're going to see how that's coming on. The extraction that we're going to put in place um, and the reasons behind that as well. Because obviously with wood turning, extraction is going to be massively important. Um, for these videos, um, we have the extractor going fairly regularly. If I need to dust mask up, I will. If no one was watching me, if I didn't have to talk and be heard, then I would always have my powered respirator on anyway. Um, but I just need to get the message across to you. So maybe um, the extractor will be on more than, than uh, my dust mask. So today's project, let's get on with it. Otherwise I will be rushing again. Um, today's project is going to be um, about making some useful tools for the workshop. We've done some gifty items, we've done bowls, we've done resin, all those sorts of things. We've looked at some technical things last, last week like um, thread chasing and long hole boring. So we're going to start um, by making, we're going to make the little um, awl first, little bridle. This is what I made. Um, I made this one just as a little practice piece for the wood turning magazine. Um, that's a piece of Sonic and Rosewood, um, a little bit of copper uh, piping. And we're going to go through all of this. And then this was a, a six inch nail that was just um, shaped to size, all glued together with a bit of epoxy. Um, so we're going to do one of those first. Um, a braddle, is li that lives in my back pocket all the time. Um, as a wood turner, you'll find that you'll be using braddles constantly. And then a little maker's mallet, um, that was a shape. I'll tell you where I got that shape from. I, from France, um, brought back after a show once, I brought back that one, a bit of lignum, a bit of ash. So I thought, I know, for the magazine, for the wood turning magazine, I'll make another one. So we made um, a, another version. Now that's lignum vitae in the top, so very hard, dense material. We're not going to use lignum because I appreciate that not everyone will have it in their workshop. Um, so we're going to use, what well, have I got? A nice bit of that rock maple that I used on the threads last week. And we've got a nice piece of oak for the handle, actually. Um, so we're going to replicate one of these. Now this is going to have a through handle with a wedge in it as well. So we'll go from start to finish, just like everything else. We're not going to skip anything so you can't see it. We'll go right the way through it. And um, then, go on. Sorry. Yeah. Um, just quickly. Yes. Um, what were the dimensions for the true circle for the sigils? Do you have any idea? Yes. Yeah, so it's this, um, like I say there, I'm just going on camera just for a minute, just to get you the picture. Um, the true circle is the uh, measurement that Axminster um, publish in the catalogue. And if you haven't got one of these catalogues, go and grab one. There's lots available still. You can go and help yourself um, or phone up and, and grab them yourself. The shop's not open still at the moment. But uh, phone up our call centre and grab one or go online and, and, um, and ask for one. But if you go to the wood turning pages here, you'll find line drawings. Now the line drawings will tell you the optimum size, what we refer to as an optimum size. So you won't see it brilliantly from where you are, but these optimum sizes here, it will give you an internal and external um, optimum size. That's the perfect circle. Okay, so those are the sizes to go for. Okay, um, the other alternative and in um, doing that is we is go for the um, the speed sizer, this little gadget that uh, was the brainchild of Chris Fisher, the blind wood turner. 
Okay, now that gives you the optimum sizes of all the jaws, both internal and external sizes. So you can use that to um, scribe those sizes on your bowl blanks or put it between centers with the bowl blank and scribe with a braddle or um, a marking tool. Another uh, good tool for, for getting optimum sizes of jaws. Right, we're going to start now. The other thing I was going to say, and we've got, we're doing our braddle, we're doing our mallet today, but also I made these last night. I told you already um, that I'm doing the extension. That's going to involve um, a couple of layers of bricks. So my trowels were pretty shoddy, uh, to be honest. Um, and so I thought, okay, about time we have some new handles. So that was the handle that we took off of my little pointing trowel there. So again, this is a similar thing to what we're going to be doing now with a braddle actually. So you can see that one is, is seen better days, this one. So this is a piece of oak. I've used a bit of copper piping again for the, the ferrule there. Obviously brass, you can provide pre-made brass ones if you wish. Um, and that was all made up last night, epoxied in. So that's gonna be used now um, on our extension in the next few days and weeks, um, which you will see come to life. So those are a good couple of options there. So you can do that with anything, whether it comes to your turning tools, to, to um, uh, trowels like that, to garden tools even. It's the same sort of process we're about to use and um, can be used on all of those things. So it's time to get all those old tools and uh, a bit of a makeover. Okay, so let's start first with the smallest project and that's gonna be the all the braddle. And we're gonna go through everything here. So I'm using, I've chosen, this is, I'll be honest, these projects, they're getting rid of all the scraps in the workshop anyway. This is a bit of, um, this is a bit of walnut here. Um, I've cut to a rough size. Um, with the braddle that I just showed you, I'm gonna mark roughly, cause it's not, it's a little bit big for what I want. So I'm gonna just roughly mark it out. And what we might as well use center wise is a friction drive or safety center. So safety center, doo -doo -doo -doo, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a matched tailstock center as well. So basically it's the ring center is going to be the drive. So a non-bearing hard, hard point and then a, a, a live center with the same profile on the tailstock side. So we'll pop that in there. Okay. I'm going to take out the single point center that I've already got and we'll swap over for that one. Charlie, if you could do the same thing as you always do, just let me know what the times are so I don't go too overrun too much. We'll have a little bit of light on the situation here. So this is a friction drive. I tend to use friction drives or safety centers um, a lot when I'm teaching um, school kids for the first time. If they've, if they've never used a lathe, um, we all know that uh, teenagers don't really have any fear. So this gives a little bit of discipline. This allows them to understand how hard they can press a chisel onto the timber before it stops. Um, otherwise they just shove the chisel in and, and all sorts happen. So you need to understand that, that before. So we're gonna add a little bit more pressure. The lay speed on this one's gonna be quite fast. Um, let me give, can you, would you be able to come over a little bit more, Charlie? If I, do you mind if I just grab the camera? I don't want to take the job away from you. There we are. I'm just going to get right on point. There we are. That's brilliant. All right. I've got to be careful not to tread on his toes. There we are. Nice and quick. So I want to be, I'm going to turn this about 2,000 revs, I think. There we are. That's 2,000 revs. Glass is down. Roughing gouge, of course, initially. So it's a big old bruise of the roughing gouge. So if it's gonna stop, this is the safety centre bit. If I shove that in, everything stops. So I need to just tweak that up and take my time now. And you'll probably fly, find that that stops a couple of times. Every time it stops, give it a tweak with the tail stop. There we are, that's enough. Let's give that a clean up with the skew. So, tall rest higher with the skew. Let's adjust, get it in nice and close again. 
and just clean that surface up. Where the um, where the sensors are will be cleaned up in a moment. There we are, that's enough. Right, now before I go too far, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself really. I need to get that hole drilled because there is potential that we might get a little bit of run out. So let's just pop a chuck on, drill the hole. And we roughed it down to a near size. I have prepped a little bit more than I would normally do, only because I didn't want to. I didn't want to go too far. I didn't want to um, be too rushed today. I think we've done enough of rushing around. Um, this is a just a regular set of what I refer to as engineering jaws, but they're great for holding pieces like this. Um, there's a big split going through this bit of timber. We're going to ignore that. If I was worried about it, I'd put a, just a little bit of super glue in there. There we are, that's enough. Uh, we can true that up in a minute. Um, if I was worried about that split, a little bit of thin super glue, tight bond super glue would be good. Nice quick speed. I'm just tidying up that edge going to drill a little hole. I've already sized the hole for the nail I'm using so I've done that prep for you. Um, obviously I don't know what nail you're going to use so you're going to have to size your drill bit to match the nail you're using. Um, can you use a prong and pointed center if you don't have safety centers yet? Uh, no absolutely yeah I'm just using that I tend to use that on all small pieces um, that's the only reason I'm using it. Um, so I'm just going to drill a hole. Then I'm going to explain to you what we're putting in that uh, that drill hole. So right, can can we see that? This bucket. Yeah. So that bucket. Can you? I don't know whether you can see. Let me turn the light off. I don't know whether you can see in that bucket, it's full of nails. That's the nails that I use for my brattle points, okay? Nothing special about those, just normal galvanized nails. That, all I'm gonna do is then hold that in the chuck with my hacksaw. Okay, with that one, just cut the top off. Okay, so we cut the top off. Then I can hold that in there just Give this a couple of um, uh, a couple of going over with with some um, emery paper, um, and then on the grinder, I just grind a little four prong. You can do what I've done with the other one, which is just round it. Okay, that one's literally just rounded over, and I've done that on the grinder again. It's entirely up to you though. But just one little point: these are going to be epoxied in. Then I put a vernier on there just to measure and got the closest uh, drill bit that I could get. You know, a little bit. A little bit bigger so it'll slide in nicely. We're going to epoxy this, remember, but that's what we're getting. So from that nail to that point. Okay, let's just drill a hole. So a little, a little countersink first. I'm going to turn the, the lathe down a wee bit. Make sure you keep clearing the swarf. And I'm going to go in about 20 mil. There we go. Could you use masonry nails? Yep, any nail really. I mean, if you think what a braddle's doing, it's not actually, um, you know, creating that much pressure. So these nails, some of them are soft, um, but they're certainly going to be much harder than the timber. So it's not a big deal really. So there's the hole. We're going to use the um, tailstock center now on that one, and I'm going to um, base my uh, turning around it. Okay, so nearly there. Whilst we've got this chuck on though, let's have a look at making the ferrule. 
So I've made a couple already this morning, but I'm just going to do a little bit of work on another one just to show you. So I've got a couple of different size ones there. It's copper pipe, you know, it's, it's scraps from copper pipe. Um, I'm not going out buying copper piping, just scraps. So all I'm doing, there's a piece that's been hacksawed off. I do tend to hacksaw them, so let's pop that in there. It's nice and secure, this type of hold. Um, if you don't have jaws like this, these are called internal external jaws. If you go to, say for instance, your regular chuck, take off the top jaws. Underneath that, you've, you'll find the accessory mounting jaws. Now they will close down and hold um, copper piping. So you'll have a nice, um, around about 10 to 12 mil of grip there. So that, that will do the same job for you. And just make a few ferrules at the same time. Um, now, in terms of turning copper, all the same precautions you do when you're turning timber. Eyes, lungs, fingers, sharp edges here. Um, I'm gonna use a carbide tip tool now just to clean that surface up. Um, blah, 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 blah. This is a nice one for this. These carbide tips are nice and hard, so all I'm gonna do is just clean that edge up. You'll see the shavings come away beautifully. Same on that side. You get a lovely little curl. Watch those shavings though. Okay, that's nice and tidy. A bit of emery paper. And don't put your fingers anywhere near it, okay? Your fingers will be cut and sliced to ribbons if you touch the edge of that sharp um, copper. Dust extraction, please, Charlie. Don't want to be breathing copper dust in. Just to go, and then I go straight to the straight to the hacksaw. Checking the shavings. So straight to the hacksaw, turn it over, and do the same thing now on this side, and then you've got your your little brass. Oh, sorry, your copper ferrule. 20 minutes. It's been 20 minutes, brilliant. Okay. So there we are. So there's the one I prepared earlier. So we know what we're doing with this. Nice little copper. Girl, now we'll just do the easy bit. We'll turn, turn the handle to suit. Take that off. Back to where we were at. Now I'm going to use a single pointed center because I've got a hole in the piece now. So single point is center. All right, so there's the hole we drilled. That's the original drive. So that goes in there. And now everything we do is turned around that center hole. So it always has to be in the middle. Um, this will wobble a little bit now. So we'll go back to the skew, back to 2000 revs. So just to tidy up. There we are. So we've got our solid timber. So now we need to make a little um, step for that to, sleep, to slip over. Okay, so I'm going to measure the ferrule. Have a quick check. You notice I've only done a short length at the moment. If I've made a mistake and I've cut too much off, only doing a short length means I've got a little bit more to play with. Now, we we could do with probably about 0.5 of a mil to come off of that. So I'm gonna take another small cut and try it again. Almost. 
tiny little bit more. Oh, well, now we're getting there. Look, that's that's fitting nicely. So I want to make the rest of that fit. So I would say just another three mil in length and down to that diameter. That's him, right. And what we'll do now is we'll add that because now I can turn the rest down to it. And incidentally, that is purposely done. So probably a little bit too much if I'm honest, but you want to have a little bit of um, a little bit of a cup in here because when we put the nail in, we're gonna uh, make that proud with epoxy. So I want a, a real bung of epoxy in there. So that's that's an important part of it. Okay, so now we can now we can make um, our shapes. Let's go. Similar shape to the one that I've already done. Just rough out first. And let's, let's have instead of having those angular edges like we had on the um, trowel, let's go for something a little bit more shapely. So I'll rough out with the bow gouge. I, again, I'm aware that I've got a bit of a split in this piece of wood, so I'm just being a little bit cautious. Raise the tool rest up. We'll finish with a skew. Look, this is, there's no nice line to that at all yet, so here we go. Skew chisel. Just to blend everything in, give us some nice lines back down to our little copper ferrule. And why not? Because we can. Couple of little lines. We'll do a little bit of sanding. Let's just stop to show you what we've got before we sand. All right, nice bit of walnut this one. Okay, Charlie, if we have the extraction on, please. Starting with a hundred grit. to uh, you know the acids in your hand so something like a friction polish isn't brilliant there's that split like I said if I was worried about it I'll put some super glue on it but you know this is just a, a demonstration for you guys to see how it's done it will be used but 
Cool. The, the oil I'm using here is just some that we used last week. This is a bit of the food safe oil. So just so it doesn't go to waste, I'm just using it up on all of these things. That's pretty, isn't it? That's a really nice timber, despite the split. 10 pound feature, we'll call that. All right, just a little bit of burnishing. I won't worry with shavings, we'll, we'll just do it with a the tissue. There you are, is a good reason for using tissue and not rag. Whilst that was a good example, let's have, we'll have a talk about this in a minute. So that grabbed and it, tissue, it ripped. There's nothing stopping with using um, rag, cotton rag, but if you're gonna use it, just have small pieces so that if it does grab, it doesn't take your fingers with it. This stuff rips and that what happens. My, one of my pet hates for wood turners is using wire wool. I always worry about wire wool because wire wool will grip and it will take fingers in with it. Um, and also it will tarnish, it reacts with um, uh, the tannic acid in a lot of timbers. Um, so that, that one of my reasons that I tend to go for nylon equivalents. But yeah, you, there's a good example there of what can happen. Um, the lathe will grab virtually anything. Right, let's just get rid of some of these tools. We're gonna talk about fitting that one together. Oh, we just gotta finish the end of that one off, haven't we? Okay, so I'm just gonna just very quickly knit that off on the sander. Just off camera, I just don't use the, um, the flush cut just to cut some of that waste away first. Then we'll use a little sanding disc. Little sanding disc on the C jaws with a faceplate ring. Homemade that one, faceplate ring. Um, it's my accent, it's the faceplate ring with a homemade piece. Charlie, this the extractor on just for a little while. <laughs> through the grades we're going to stick at that just add a little bit more oil um do you use an air cleaner as well as a dust extractor or does using filter face shield negates um no the net the need for the air cleaner no it doesn't at all everything you can do to maximize the efficiency of the um the dust filtration will help you uh, air cleaner is to, to use as well as a dust extractor and as well as your personal protective equipment. Okay, it helps that bit more. So it absolutely, I would always advise going for it. Um, uh, that is my intention in here. I've got a bigger dust extractor being fitted in. I'm going to be fitting my um, air cleaner. All these things I'm going to show you as they get fitted in, um, as well as my powered respirator as well. Um, everything you can do to help your uh, lungs more the better. So no, it's not an instead of. Never use an air cleaner instead of a dust extractor. It just will not work because that means it has to go past you to get to the air filter. Um, what grit is the sanding disc? The sanding disc there was a bit coarse, it was 100. Really, after that, I would then go down to a 180 um, and to a 240 and maybe even a 320. But just for a little bit of speed, I stopped. You, you can see that I stopped. You can see the, the sanding marks and the difference in and finish there but I just wanted to get on with that for you but there's a nice little handle I like the way it, it complements that copper but let's pop the um, the pin in that would then need to be so I would epoxy that in okay into there fits in nicely epoxy that in and you want to stand it up right so the epoxy fills up that little gap that little void um, and creates a little dome uh, the one I have here you can see you can see what I've done there. You can see the epoxy, I'm hoping. Okay, so a similar sort of thing going on at that point. 
All right, so a nice little project that one. And that was the same way that I um, done the handles for the, the trowels that I showed you at the beginning. So tall handle uh, making should not be a problem. So it's right. Been, it's been half an hour. Been half an hour, right. We've got half an hour to turn a, a mallet, which is easy. So just come back a little bit, Charlie, just so it's on me for a moment while I smooth the lathe around. So I hope you enjoyed that one. That was a nice little project. Like I say, braddles are always useful. Um, they're a little bit like tape measures in this workshop. They always go missing. I must have about 50 different tape measures at some, place, at some point and pencils, same thing. Um, so I, the preparation I've done for this Okay, so I've got a piece of rock maple. I've drilled the hole. Okay, otherwise it means me going over to the pillar drill, taking you with me and all that camera moving gets a little bit, so you get seasick after a while. But there's the hole, you can see right the way through. Okay, a nice um, 25 mil hole, that one. And then I'm using a piece of oak for the uh, handle. So I'm gonna do the head first. I'm gonna make it slightly elongated, this one. Um, and I'm gonna clean up the edges. We are then gonna um, wedge. Uh, through so I'm going to need to cut a wedge in it. So there's the wedge. I'm using it a contrasting color This is a bit of sapili Okay um, So I haven't um, created a drive yet. Uh, that was one thing I was going to do this morning So what should we do? Let's quickly improvise So because we've got two hot we, we've got a hole running all the way through I need to be able to drive um, So we need a cone going out through the middle you could hold another um, metal live center in your chuck if you wanted to, or you make a wooden one. The wooden one's just as easy, so we might as well do that. Um, I'm just gonna look for a bit of timber to put in the chuck. Um, do you not wear rubber gloves when working? No, I don't wear any gloves on the lathe. Rubber gloves, rubber gloves, like any gloves, will catch on the lathe, so I tend to be bare hand, bare armed, so I've got nothing that can that can grab at all. Um, I know a lot of people wear gloves to protect their fingers, but I always shudder a little bit. I always think, you know, there's a potential there for them grabbing. And I did. For me, it doesn't work. I don't like the, th the thought of it. Um, so we're going to use a bit of timber. And we need to use a C jaw, so a chuck. Light. Hmm? Is that right in my face? Let's um, do that. I want a round bit of timber, Charlie. Can you see the round bit of timber? Uh, let's go with you know, the thought in a wood turner's workshop that's full of round bits of timber. Oh, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. drive. Um, so we're just going to very very quickly turn a piece down and stay there. Doing too much of this is literally just knocking the corners off. To give me a bearing surface. And a quick touch up on the underside here. Is there any way to make the hole on the lathe if they don't have a pillar drill? Um, yeah, there is. The only issue I would say there, that's a long um, hole to drill. Um, but I would do it just like you would. Um, you remember we'd done the, the pepper grinders last week? or No, the week before. Exactly the same thing. Rough turn it, hold it in your jaws, and then... Um, the drill chuck in your tailstock, and away you go. Same, same sort of thing. So we're gonna make a little drive now. That's nicely 
shaped. Uh -oh. We're just going to make a one time. Um, with the jaws, some people tighten all four. Why do you only tighten one? Uh, no, you will find me tightening all of them at times. It, it, there is a difference. So if you, if you look at those two chucks, can you see that child? So this is a 100 mil SK100. So this has the pinions as part of the key. The key is the pinion. So you only need to use um, one part, one turn in one point. Um, you'll get the same grip. However, on this type of chuck, you've got the back of the scroll inside the chuck. So you've got a pinion there, you've got a pinion there, and you've got a pinion there. You can actually get a little bit more pressure if you go to each pinion. You just do one, fine, but then you can creep a little bit further because that pinion's now moved a little bit further around. Um, it's like using a ratchet, um, or if you're using a spanner, just if you can creep to the next position, you always get a little bit more purchase. That's all. That's the only reason. So what we're going to do here, a little taper. A little bit high with that tool rest there. Drop the tool rest down. So 25 mil. That's out, uh, that's too big. This is just going to be a one time drive. Um, otherwise, if it wasn't, I'd make sure that that hold point was a little bit more accurate and size better. There we are, that's going to be my drive. Tail stock sensor can come up the other side because it's a cone anyway you're always going to get that center point being the hole so you know we we know where we are with that that's what we want now if this does grab i'll warn charlie because he's with me here if this grabs it'll be a horrible shriek don't worry so we're going to use Grab me a tin of wax out of the cupboard there, Charlie. Any one, doesn't matter. They all do the same thing. Lovely job. Nice bit of organic oil wax. Okay. Just gonna use my new bridle. Right, let's get that rough down. All rest in speed can come up a bit now. There we are. So that's about the right diameter. I'm just going to clean up the sides or the edges. So let's go small bowl gouge. I've got a specific want for this. I want this to be like um, not like the old chair makers mallets, um, but a small version. 
Um, why the wax? Doesn't that make the drive more likely to slip? No, what it's doing, I don't know, you may have heard right at the beginning, it was making a really awful screech. So that was just, just stopping that screech. It, the grip's not a problem. I mean, there's so much pressure on there. So where I'm cutting toward now, so I'm cutting toward the head. This is going to be where the handle's going to enter. It's been 40 minutes. 40. Any particular types of wood to make mallets? So this is a piece of rock maple. Basically you want the head to be a decent um, density so it doesn't uh, split and break too quickly. So this is maple. Um, a lot of carver's mallets are made out of beech. Of course, ash handles work really well because they absorb the, the pressure. Um, the one I showed you earlier was a piece of lignum because it's dead hard, dead heavy. Let's just do a rough sand on there, actually. Um, um, so it's dead hard. Sorry, um, is this skew always used on the very top of the workpiece? Yeah. Well, the, in my style of, of, of cutting, and I certainly, if you're a beginner, if you, you, you're not used to a skew, or you're not getting on with a skew, have the skew high. Don't have your tool rest low below center. It will always grab you. Keep it high. Right, best for a device. You'll see a lot of um, re uh, professional turners, certainly um, skew um, experts, will use um, the skew anywhere on any part of the blade. They've had years and years of training to be able to do that. If you're beginning and you're struggling with a skew up high, using to roll beads, using the tip, as in the, um, as in this tip, okay, and V cut the long tip, and we tend to plane, and it's not all the time, but most of the time you'll be you plane cut with the long point high. Um, you can plane as long as you're a little bit careful and present the tool in the same. Um, same angle with a long point down, but I would, if you're struggling or beginning, ignore that just for the moment, carry on with your uh, long point up high. And um, what was used for the metal point of the bread wall? Bread wall where it's the metal point was a nail. Metal point was a nail. So that was, that's what I started off with. Okay. And then after I cut the, the head off, that's what we ended up with. It's your choice whether you put flats on it or whether you keep it round like the other one here. It's entirely up to you as to what you want to use it for, as to what you shape it or how you shape it. Okay, so extractor on then please, Joe. We're going to give a very brief sanding on this one. Not much. I'm not going to put a finish on. Just get some of those tooling marks out of the way, soften the edges a little bit. There we are, that'll do. Um, what's the difference between maple and rock maple? Rock maple. Um, if I'm honest, the only difference I know, whether it is a different species of maple, I'm guessing it is, but the what I've um, get um, referred to as rock maple is literally that it's a harder type of maple to the point where it really takes a lot of welly um, a lot of welly to um, to turn it. it. Really, really hard, very, very dense material. That's why it was good last week to um, make those threads out of. But you get normal maple, it's just, it's quite nice to work. It's quite soft, it's, it's easy. We're gonna make the handle now, fit through there. We'll put a split in it and wedge it. So we're nearly there. 45 minutes. 45 minutes. Back to centre for turning, so between centres I'll go with the same friction drive that side. So we're turning a solid piece of timber now, so we've got no hole up the middle of this one, so I'll go again with a ring centre. There it is, hiding it from myself. And we're going to make it fit there. That can stay in frame. And we're using a lovely piece of oak. 
Really quite a spectacular piece of oak actually. And we're going to size that hole. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. And the way I'm going to cheat is use the, the drill bit that I use to drill the hole as my guide for my calipers. So once we rough down, I'll show you what I mean there. There's the drill bit, so we're going to look at that one in a moment. So let's get turning. So 2,000 revs. There we are, we're rough down to the cylinder. Um, what's the difference between the awl and the bradle? I was scared someone was going to ask me that. Now, there, the differences are, I know there's a huge variety of lengths, there's a huge variety of profiles. So some are round, some are square, some are triangular. Um, someone that knows a little bit more about it can tell you, but go on the Axminster website then. You'll see all the different types of awl. I think awl is a generic name. Um, Braddle is a um, is a tool within that band of tools. I think. But the rest of the um, rest of the guys out there watching, if anybody knows that quest that answer to that question, pop it up if you would. I'm just, I don't know whether the camera caught that then. Um, all I'm doing is just making my initial probing cut and I want to see how close I am to fitting in there. And as luck would have it, that's pretty perfect. I wasn't expecting much different, if I was honest, because I sized it with the drill that we drilled it with. So you can't go too far wrong with that. Do be careful though, because not all drill bits are parallel. You may find, especially forces and sources, some could be um, have an angled profile, so you're sizing the top. Now I'm happy that that's pretty close. We want to be slightly proud. Test that in a moment, just whilst, before we do our final test though, let's shape the handle. 15 so, minutes. How much, mate? 10 minutes left. 10 minutes left. Good. I'm nearly there. make it comfortable. Um, do you have a specific type of jig, jig for cutting lignum crown green bowls for them to be mounted on the lathe? 
Um, so what you can do with those, if you're lucky enough to get them, um, if you pop out the, the markers on the left and the right, you can get a little flat to, um, to put between centers. So that's what I tend to do. Depends on what you want to do with them, really. Um, you can sand the flat to, um, you know, to, to use or... Back in the day, the really old ones used to have ivory markers, usually with initials in or a club, club badge. Um, but the later ones were alternative or even um, not plastic. Bakelite. But yeah, if you pop them out, you can usually get a good purchase. There we are. Let's let's leave it at that. I think we're we're playing enough. We'll just put a little a little V cut. A very very brief sanding. Just a quick extractor there, Charlie. See, you grab me the glue, the, um, the type on. Oh, yes. Cheating there. Normally, I'd use um, a Japanese pull saw, um, but just for speed, I just use the band saw on my B block just to cut that little split up through the middle. This is where I hope it fits. If not, it doesn't matter if not at the moment, we can just go back to the lathe in a sec. So, we're going most of the way up. It's just just seizing at that end. So let's just quickly do that. What's the time, Charlie? Got six minutes left. Six. Oh, right, okay. Right. Just enough. Just enough. So it doesn't matter there's a split. That's a good thing about that. Um, the the uh, ring center is supporting it, it's fine. So little skew chisel. quite nicely it comes through at a good length as well because now we're going to add a little bit of that glue so I'm going to put a glue, the glue in the hole otherwise what tends to happen is you tend to push it off the the shaft as you put it in um what finish would you use use on a mallet I'd oil them they're going to get a lot of abuse and if you oil them, you can always add a bit more oil later on. If you put a hard finish on, that hard finish tends to chip um, and become a problem. There we are. And I have cut a little wedge here somewhere. Obviously the wedge is far too long, but we're going to go in. There we are, it's 
far as it will go. Wipe off the excess. Just going to come to the bandsaw a minute, so I'm just behind you. How many minutes, Charlie? Four. Four to go? Yeah. Right, just a very brief sanding. So, Charlie, could you pop the sander on, uh, the dust extractor on, just a minute? Um, do you not put glue in the wedge? I did. I did, I, there was an excess glue on the top, so I used that just to put down into the little little gap before I hit the um, wedge in. And obviously I normally take a lot more time over it than, than the time we're spending at the moment. I'm going to make a lot of dust now, Charlie. Can you bring that over so we can actually... can see the wedge coming through. Let's pop a bit of oil on it just so we can get that grain to jump out. You'll see all the colours then. Um, but that's quite a nice long mallet, this one. How much time have I got, Charlie? One minute. One minute. Right, we're going to say goodbye, everybody. But let me just finish off, if we can have the camera up to me, Charlie. I'll finish this again, like everything else, guys. I'll finish this again so you can properly see it. We'll get rid of that one. There's our two projects for the day, our little mallet, our little brattle. So join me again on Tuesday, um, same time, same place, four o'clock in my workshop, Coleman Waste uh, Workshop, um, for more Skill Centre at home. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.